morning, ladies and gentlemen from Toronto, Canada. Small island developing states, or SIDS, are a group of 57 odd small island countries, were recognized as a distinct group of developing countries in June 1992 by United Nations. These states tend to share similar sustainable development challenges, including small but growing populations, limited resources, remoteness, and, um, and um, fragile um, environments, natural disasters, and external shocks and excessive dependence on international trade. Uh, amongst these three regions are Caribbean, Pacific Islands, and perhaps more affluent region is Africa, Indian, Ocean, uh, Mediterranean, and South China Sea. Games. And in there sits the gem of a paradise called Seychelles. Tourism accounted for 25.5% of Seychelles' GDP in 2019, making it one of the most tourism-dependent countries in the world. And to discuss all this, I today have immense pleasure to, uh, to welcome His Excellency Didia Dogli, Minister of Tourism, Civil Aviation, Ports and Marine uh, Seychelles. Welcome, Minister. Thank you. Um, it's good um, to be here with you. Thank, thank you for, pleasure. For, for, for making the time. Uh, only a year ago, you were expressing satisfaction over the constant and gradual increase in numbers of visitors and uh, receipts over the last uh, five years. The latest figures released by Central Bank of Seychelles confirmed an increase in revenue for 2019 from the tourism industry amounting to 57.6.4 million USD equating to a little over 8 billion Seychelles rupees. According to your tourism counterparts in Mauritius and Maldives, Seychelles is considered as the best model in the region and referred to the local policies in place as one of the key contributors to the gradual, continual and sustained growth in both visitor numbers and revenue. A tourism master plan destination 2023 was launched with lots of bullish optimism the plan was to safeguard the destination's brand and image as an upmarket, selective, pristine tourism destination. Fast forward to 2020 and COVID happens, washing off most of those winds of 2019. The IMF approved Seychelles' request for emergency financial assistance under the rapid financing instrument of about uh, US 31.2 billion. Minister, what's the outlook of tourism and hospi uh, hospitality moving forward? How is your country responding to the current situation? Well, at the moment, um, well, first of all, thank you for having me and giving us the opportunity to contribute to the discussions. Um, well, um, let me start maybe from the beginning. Seychelles, um, we've had um, also cases of COVID, and um, the first case, I think, was on the 11th of March. And since then, we've had about 11 cases in total. And we had to close down the airport on the 25th of March. And, and since then, we've been very active and we've taken care of the, of the situation um, so that we were able to reopen on the 1st of, of June. So, um, so basically, life under the new norm is back to normal and business is um, operating as normal um, because there's no COVID cases active at the moment in Seychelles. And um, so what we're working towards is reopening um, the, the tourism industry. We've had already a first phase where we, with the opening of the airport on the 1st of June, um, we allowed private jets to come in and also chartered flights. So far there's 15, um, private jets that are planning to come in. Some have already come in. The advantage that Seychelles has got is that we are an archipelago. We're not one island. And um, we are using the smaller islands where we've got resorts, which is high end for people who can come with private jets and basically they can go there. And um, it's because it's sort of self isolation, yeah. um, it functions um, perfectly. So at least there's some um, revenue that is coming into the country. Um, looking forward, um, we are now planning for opening for scheduled flights, for commercial flights, okay. um, which is quite, 
complicated as probably everybody will tell you yeah. it's 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 a very fluid and, and dynamic situation so it's not very easy to just say we will be um doing this or doing that um but basically we have to take some tough decisions which include probably um, some introduction of some cases in infection cases in the future and we should be able to come out with a decision as to when we will open to commercial flights um, by the 23rd of June. So we're having everybody now sitting together and discussing it with the trade, with people who are in the business, with airlines and other businesses so that we have an agreement between government and the private sector as to how best to go forward while um, also studying what is happening around us okay. um, so that we get it um, we get it right when we reopen but we've worked on several scenarios to see how things can move forward mm -hmm. and the worst is that we will have a drop of about 80 percent of um, of visitors um, wow. if we do not open earlier enough but we're trying um, to, to get to a point of about 60 percent um, so okay. probably by July, mid-July, 1st of August, we will try and open up to, to commercial flights. Okay, all right. So uh, it was in May that uh, Seychelles declared itself COVID-free. Uh, After nine weeks, you had to, uh, of battling the virus. The number recorded uh -huh. cases were 11, and you yeah. would be an envy of many countries in the world today with that <laughs> kind of number, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. But I, I can imagine that for small island nations, that itself uh, is quite daunting. Um, uh, yeah. All of which were found on the main island of Mahe. No yeah. cases were reported on Palin, Ladik, Silhut Island and outer islands. For the moment, right. the Seychelles is free from virus from the authorities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but they, you, our authorities remain on high alert for any the public health authority alongside other organizations you are working very hard to keep citizens expats and visitors safe from the pandemic but mm -hmm. at the same time a total of 19 countries have been identified as low risk and been allowed to travel to the island as of uh, first june tell us if you have had a good response from these 19 countries and interests and talk about some of the protocols or health and safety guidelines being launched to protect both the employees of the industry as well as the visitors with special consideration placed on enhancing in infection prevention control, communication, situation monitoring, and re reporting uh, amongst others. Yeah, um, generally there's still a lot of interest for people to come to Seychelles. Um, um, almost every day we get um, people who are asking for more information about how do I come um, to Seychelles because I would like to come on holiday and most of the um, hotels and so on, um, they are telling us that most of their bookings, especially for August and late July, August is still there and also they see some booking coming in in September and October. But people are, are looking for information and I guess there's a lot of people who are tired of being locked up of being in a place that um, which is insecure you're not sure you know if you can walk around without um, mask and so on which you can easily do in Seychelles because there's no COVID cases so so the demand is there um, people wants to come um, here to Seychelles um, now speaking about the measures that we've taken first of all um, We've got um, a, a public health commission that has been mm -hmm. extremely active and we've worked with them also from the tourism industry during the time we were repatriation, repatriating visitors who were stuck here in Seychelles. And they have come out with a number of measures. First of all, they put a lot of emphasis on, on uh, social distancing that people, I mean, at least keep their distance. And in areas where there cannot be social distancing, like if you're flying on the small planes and going to the other islands or you're using the ferries or the buses, public buses, that people use the mask um, okay. in, in those areas. So it's to stop infection in case there is an infection that happens that people do not infect each other. 
And also there's a lot of um, education going on about these things and also hand um, hygiene and also respiratory hygiene that people pay attention to these things and also using hand sanitizers and this sort of thing um, has been ongoing. And also in schools and in businesses and, um, and government um, organizations and institutions, um, all of them, they have at least one person that has been trained who is the health and safety officer and has been trained in how to deal in case there are any um, cases that appears on within those organizations so that they can report and they can take action and also make sure that um, the measures that has been put in place are adhered, ad adhered to. Um, for the time being, a lot of the work that we are doing is that we are um, also preparing the hotels and the guest houses. We've worked on a, a number of guidelines and protocols okay. that all the hotels and um, also restaurants and other um, entertainment organizations that um, provide um, recreational activities to tourists and all that. So we've prepared a whole range of guidelines and which are tailor-made for all these different organizations okay. so that they can um, prepare themselves. So, but by the time the guests start arriving, they will know exactly how to protect themselves, protect their staff, and also protect their clients. Okay. So these are now has been rolled out and the, and the, the hotels are, have got them into place. We're, we're doing training with the different health and safety officers that they've appointed. So make sure that they really understand what, what the implications are and what they need to do um, so that um, they, they, they are in the best position for them to do these, these activities. Okay. Um, so we're making sure that everybody is ready and um, so that um, by the time the tourists, the visitors start arriving, um, in all the different sectors, not only the tourism sectors, but all the different all sectors. All different sectors, okay. Yeah, they are ready, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, some bold decisions have been taken to prevent further spread and see resurgence, but your critics cite that they are, there's more focus towards the elite traveler segment rather than the regular visitors. The destination will only consider elite visitors from low-risk countries traveling through private mm -hmm. jets, and chartered passenger direct flights. Not everybody can afford that. And for mm -hmm. those who prefer ocean travel only, yachts and super yachts will be allowed to dock. And the biggest of all decisions, the Seychelles has announced uh, an 18-month ban on affluent uh, cruise ships, effectively immediately. Cruise ships being the biggest carriers of the virus, the move has been met with uh, general acceptance from your tourism stakeholders even if it is understood that it will affect the country's already struggling tourism industry. Cruise ships do not only bring visitors to its 115 islands, but also encourages spending on entertainment, food service, all the periphery services alongside accommodation and inspiration for repeat uh, trips. How long the regular travelers uh, should wait for travel restric uh, res uh, restrictions to ease further? And are you not worried to lose some of that base? Uh, uh, you've just mentioned that international flights um, are about to kick um, in to serve the middle class segment. But uh, how much are you pushing for that? How eager and anxious are, to, are you to get that started? Well, we, will, we want to get started because as you've said from the outset, the economy is um, very dependent on tourism. Although we have fisheries and and offshore financial services and so on that also contributes towards the economy. Um, tourism cannot be replaced at the moment. Um, um, so, so definitely we would like to get the, the quantity of the tourists um, to, to, be, to be arriving and also the, the, the foreign exchange that we need also to get the economy back um, in form. Um, but what I was talking about was the first phase. We, we are doing it in two phases. The first phase, which is um, opening up to um, low risk countries with private jets and going to the private islands and high end uh, is basically for us, this is the easier. This is like the Americans would say the low hanging fruits because we have 
um, that kind of clientele that has been coming to Seychelles. And, um, and they can easily get a PCR test. They can get onto a jet and um, they don't have to go through the hubs where they could be infected and all that sort of thing. So, uh, so for us, that was the easy, easiest thing to start. So we start with the first phase and, and we test the system and see how it functions and learn from it. And then and it will help us prepare for the next phase, which is opening up to commercial flights where you will have a lot more people coming in. Um, but definitely we would like to do that. And, and, and for us to be able to do that, what we're looking at is first of all, targets the low risk countries which will minimize the, the possibility of getting infected um, visitors into the country. At least if there are, it will be at a very low level. And then putting in um, potential tests so as we can check from the very beginning and keep that to, the, to a low level. To us, it's very important to keep this in that, um, to keep the number of infected people and have very you low had, and manageable. And have you had, um, like, you, uh, you opened on 1st June. So uh, yeah. uh, today is, uh, I believe, it's uh, 11th. And now 11th, have, yeah. Yeah, so have you had any visitors coming in? Is the system working so far? Yeah, yeah, we've had visitors coming in with um, chartered boats, um, with luxury ships, boats, okay. yachts that okay. has been arriving. But also we've got private jets. Like I've told you, there's about 11 private jets that have been arriving here okay. in Seychelles. Okay. And so far there's no, not, no cases whatsoever. And they have to send in a PCR test. And, and so because they are flying also private, um, there's very limited. And, you, and you've got enough medical supplies and health professionals, all of that is in control there. Yeah, yeah, we will basically, uh, we've invested, yeah, we've invested strongly into our medical system. Seisha has already had a very good medical system. We've now got four um, isolation centers and yeah. we've got various um, um, places where we can use as quarantine centers and we have even imported staff from Kenya, about 42. Okay. To provide support um, nurses and doctors to support our own staff and here. And how are you going about it? It's island by island. You are isolating, and you know you're keeping. Uh, uh, what's yeah. the, the process? I mean, well, the main island Mahi has got three, um, two isolation centers, okay. and then we have a number of quarantine um, centers. But also, we can use the hotels for quarantine purposes we are asking each hotel to have one or two rooms depending on the size for quarantine purposes um, and also um, the smaller islands like Prala and Madig um, they have their own um, isolation center um, in case not for a lot of people but at least they have a couple of people that they can put in there and also we've invested a lot in ventilators and that sort of thing so we fully equipped it in case there is any complications and there are difficulties and so on. Um, so there's no worry there, but we, but at the same time, although we are ready and equipped, we still want to keep the country as much as possible um, COVID free. We so, don't want to open and then close again. Okay, um, understood. So uh, Seychelles may admit Israelis as part of an initial reopening, as part of an emerging arrangement fits, um, uh, it fits the pattern of countries uh, working bilaterally or in small groupings or bubbles to restore travel amongst themselves. It's a, it's a trend which is very much being talked yeah. about. Um, and I believe they um, either a deal has already been struck or it's in making. And under this anticipated deal, Israelis visiting the Seychelles would be exempted from mandatory quarantine there and, and on returning to Israel. Do you see such arrangements with perhaps other countries or even between other SIDS countries such as Singapore or Maldives and Mauritius? And what about domestic tourism? Local people uh, do have a decent pers purchasing power and, and although disposable income right now is, is limited. Mm -hmm. Well, um, staycation has been our first um, activities that we've done. We've promoted it a lot 
because okay. our people, um, Seychelles has got a quite a strong um, per capita income. So a lot of our people tend to travel, to, especially to the Middle East, yeah. uh, Mauritius, South Africa. So we've been pushing very hard for people to, um, to do a staycation, as to, to go on holidays on the different islands and visit um, and use some of the luxury resorts that normally they will not be able to afford um, uh, because there are discounts and all that sort of thing. So um, that has been working very well, especially during the weekend. There's quite a lot of people moving between the islands and going on, on holidays and so on. And that is helping the hotels and the restaurants. Keeping it afloat. Pay their bills, yeah, pay their bills and, and keep them afloat and so on. So from that side, it's been working, I mean, excellent. We really were very happy with the way it's working. Um, with Mauritius, we, well, Mauritius is also now, doesn't have any um, cases. So they are COVID free also. So we will, um, I think they have a few cases, um, have but recently I haven't heard whether they have any cases so it's one of the countries that we we are happy to work with and um, and Israel as you said basically Seychelles has look at, is looking at all those low risk countries for us to start off with yeah. so that at least when we open again um, we don't have to close for it so <laughs> you know we've been a couple it, of weeks is later it, uh, decided with Israel is or is it still in in discussions because if it is then it'll be one of the first earliest bubbles that are being created so but yeah we we have an agreement um the main issue was about the cpr test um which um their um public health authority discussed with our own public yeah. health authority but in principle they see us as a country that um of course their citizen can come and we um and, and spend their holidays here. So there's no problem. The only small barrier was whether they should have the CPR test or rapid test before they come here or whether they do the test here. And this is, we are currently sorting out. And once that is sorted out, we, we basically can, can start receiving tourists from, from Israel. But we are looking at also at other countries like Switzerland, um, Austria that has very low levels of infection. Okay. So uh, World Environment Day was recently celebrated. Seychelles mm -hmm. has many reasons to celebrate this day for having mm -hmm. achieved really admirable go uh, global status in environmental and nature conservation. A lot of hard work and pa passionate work has been invested in this um, mm -hmm. uh, because of the natural beauty you have to protect it. In addition, tourism lifted the entire region out of po poverty and laid the basis for the sustainable management of the island's unique flora and fauna. Both mm -hmm. on, on island and in the ocean for deca decades to come. So not just um, uh, on the islands themselves, but the waters all around. However, just one example is that the coral scientists in Seychelles, among the most renowned in the world, now face an uncertain future as monitoring and surveillance program funds will run dry by the end of the summer if nearby tourism hotspots fail to track paying visitors. This, will, this all comes in what was said to be a landmark year for biodiversity, the year 2020 was the super year for biodiversity, culminating in a global conference this autumn uh, where new biodiversity targets were due to be set for the next decade. What immediate measures are being taken uh, to protect these and other natural resources of the islands? And how are you going to overcome this difficult scenario? Well, first of all, um, from COVID, I um, personally, I believe that there's been a lot of um, um, the nature has been able to bounce back quite rapidly. I think that's the very positive side of COVID. That's the silver lining, right? You know, exactly, because a lot of the uh, human activities and the pressures that there were in the reserves and protected areas has now gone down tremendously because if you go on the beach in Seychelles today, you see almost nobody. You know, if you go out in the water, there's very few boats out there. So um, nature is having a really, you know, some Good of break. the best time <laughs> that it could get. So um, although it's true that um, uh, as far as monetary resources is concerned, a lot of the um, organization are now struggling. 
Um, government has put forward certain support that it is giving out to some of the organizations, at least to pay their staff so that they can keep on doing the work that they do, especially the scientific work and so on. Um, government came out with a stimulus whereby, you know, for the first three months, all the workers um, will be paid um, for the organizations that are not. Um, so with some incentives in and waivers as well. Yeah, exactly. So basically, government put 70 million US dollars. It, that might not sound a lot of money, but it's a small country with 95, 96,000 people. So for those organizations that couldn't finance themselves, um, government has put in enough money to support them, at least to pay their staff, even foreign staff that they had working for them for the first three months. And then as of the 1st of July, until the end of December, government will also support the local staff who pay all their salaries. So they'll still be able to operate up to a certain level, but maybe not to that level when they had um, the, the, the visitor, the tourist dollars coming in. Um, no, we, we're very proud of what we've done as far as conservation is concerned. This year, we reached the milestone of 30% of our seas being protected. Um, before that, we had 47% of our land being protected. So we recognize that um, nature is our, is our um, insurance policy um, because this is the reason why the tourists come here. They want to explore nature. They want to discover it. And Seychelles, our treasure, is really the nature that we that we basically put um, at the disposal of those who come here. And so we invest a lot in making sure that the biodiversity um, and the environment is kept as clean and as healthy as possible. And it's also good for, for fisheries because then the quality of the fish and that people eat is healthy and, um, and it is there in abundance. So sustainability, for us is is very important yeah i think it's part of your dna there you without exactly you <laughs> exactly. cannot survive it's it's a, exactly. like a religion there <laughs> exactly so uh, let's uh, moving on seychelles has had a long history of rogue investments it's mm -hmm. not a hidden fact but a major cleanup and overhauling is required of a long list of accommodation projects of over three thousand rooms Having said that, there is still room for plenty more sustained investments to support quality tourism and to avoid over-tourism. Do you think there is a case to be made now to invite more inward investments by the locals? What incentives is the government providing to encourage this trend? And um, uh, of course, you still want the, the investment from overseas. But again, um, how is COVID going to change that direction? Well, I think um, the Seychelles already, we recognized that early um, in the 90s that um, having only the large hotels and the big chains um, basically creates this big leak of the money that comes in. But also the locals didn't see um, the benefits of being, um, of all these tourists coming into the country. And we, and the government came out with, um, a strategy and by inviting people to own the tourism industry and put in through the development bank um, loans that people could take to improve um, on their property and have a small guest house of three rooms or four rooms right. um, and so on and um, and it through also, those I think it also uh, dovetails on to this experience uh, the immersive experience trend Exactly. So, and, and also this sustainability, right. um, rather than having these masses that yeah. you focus on smaller establishment where um, the visitors discover the culture, they discover the people, they understand what is going on, and they have more contact, direct contact with the people right. and the culture and the nature. And, um, and that has worked very well in Seychelles. At the moment, we've got about 53% of the rooms are in the hands of small establishments and, okay. and and that has helped the economy a lot because what we've seen is the amount of revenue that is coming into country and staying in the country has also increased substantially 
direct jobs on the grassroots to really, exactly. really immediate benefit to the locals. That's a really, really uh, very good case study, you know, that other countries yeah. uh, can learn for, um, from. It's becoming a trend now. You're seeing more and mm-hmm. more in Italy. Uh, the, this is coming through. But I think in Seychelles, this was already happening for a long time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's it's been very successful. And that has helped us because last year, for the first time, it, we had a surplus of foreign exchange in the banks. Yes. So, and that is because these local businesses are banking their money in the country. And also they are helping the fishermen, the small farmers, and um, the whole value chain is benefiting from the tourism industry. And everybody is engaged and involved. That's why I, I think exactly. the, 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 the question of opening impacts uh, everybody. You know, the- Exactly. Democratizing, I call it democratizing the yeah. tourism industry, making sure that everybody um, plays a part uh, in a role and feels that they are benefiting from it so that they are prepared to protect it and, and take care of it. Because they have their own stake, right? It's the bread on the table. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Very clever. <laughs> Which um, brings me to my next question. You being a politician, I cannot help but bring up that you know, the dates for the next presidential elections were just set mm-hmm. for 22 to 24 October. Exactly. Yeah, tourism has uh, now become the focal point of these elections. Mm-hmm. And yeah. everyone is slowly understanding that this industry is everyone's business. Even if you are not directly employed in this sector, they, they, there is a ripple effect. Therefore, right. these elections could become a magnet for a fierce competition between all sides to strike a balance between winning public trust but also generating ideas into technology, innovation, and advancements to rebuild future tourism resources. And therein lies a silver lining to the pandemic and an opportunity to up the tourism product. Do you mm-hmm. agree with this? And if so, which areas you foresee an opportunity? And what? what will your party be doing to capture that? Well, there's plenty of opportunities. And I think IT is one place where we'll have to look stronger. For example, is okay. establishing platforms, um, because a lot of people are saying, you know, there's um, different um, platforms that exist, these international booking platforms are taking too much of the money um, that they are trying to come in and we need to come up with with our own platforms to help them and lower the, the leakage of money that they, um, that they get from the whole tourism industry. And we need to come out with better IT solutions for, for them. And, some, and also COVID <laughs> itself is, um, is basically because of that problem of having personal contact with people, IT will have to play a stronger role in all the whole process of people from booking to reservation and also um, the different um, activities that gets done. Uh, But also um, Seychelles has always been very strong on nature and wellness activities. Um, We believe that's an area where we can we can expand and do well because because being out outside in nature. Technology, wellness and in, in nature activities, being out at sea, being out on trails in, the, in, in nature, um, basically lowers the risk um, in, instead of being in a room, being inside and doing activities that are inside. And we've been always been pushing these sustainable activities. I think this is an area where we'll have to explore stronger and strengthen it further so that um, and sell these well-being um, activities to, to visitors, because a lot of them have been locked down in countries where they cannot really walk around and, um, and have had to wear masks and so on. So when they are here, they can go into the forest, they can discover and, and relax and get the stress of them and, and, and also go diving, go snorkeling and that sort of thing. So these are the activities that we will have to push um, to help people get that stress off them and relax and in, in an environment which is still very healthy and, and is not under a lot of pressure. Um, but above all, I think um, 
it's about also collaborating with everybody. And this is one thing that we've been doing from the very beginning. Um, personally, I've been having a series of meetings with all the different partners, especially the private sector, including the very small um, operators, um, bring them in so that the decisions that we take as far as the tourism industry is concerned going forward, that is not something that is imposed by government, but it is a joint um, um, exactly decisions that are taken so that we go forward just like the opening um, dates and even the entry requirements and so on we have a series of discussions which are ongoing we would have hoped we would have finished it by now but because we have to go through all these discussions and getting everybody's views and getting everybody to agree it takes a little bit longer but we but in the end when we finish when we've completed that everybody will feel that at least I was consulted, I was part of the process. So, and for us, I believe, and for me, I believe this is of paramount importance, that everybody must be part and parcel of the process. So that tomorrow, if there are issues, we will work together to solve it together. Okay. So that's a very positive message. Uh, you've yeah. spoken like a true politician, but somebody <laughs> who's really connected. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that. So uh, just moving on, finally, on a, a more lighter note, Seychelles mm -hmm. very early fo on focused on marketing uh, the destination back onto the tourism circuit. The first phase of this online campaign entitled Dream Now Experience Seychelles Later was activated in April on, uh, I think, April 7th. Um, uh, and at that time, the world was just, some countries was just beginning to wake up to the COVID reality. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, this campaign uh, actually went uh, became quite successful, which I believe encouraged other destinations to do similar campaigns. But there is one campaign which happened by chance and which would uh, be hard to replicate. A Chinese uh, tourist has become a sensation <laughs> on social media in, Ch uh, in China after he yeah. and his family they were left stranded on Seychelles' third most populated island, Ladi, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right. Talk to us about this story, and uh, and because I know it went completely viral, and perhaps did more for the country than many other planned strategies mm -hmm. and campaigns. Please share yeah. the story here. Yeah, um, he's not the only one. There's about 600 tourists that are still. Um, some voluntarily stranded in Seychelles, some um, <laughs> are stranded. And uh, the some are even. The paradise to be stranded in. You know, I look at those pictures and I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, but some voluntarily has decided to stay here. And, um, and this person is still on my dig. In fact, now he's traveling around because there's no restrictions as far as moving between the different islands um, is concerned. He came here. I don't have the dates in my mind, and he came on holiday with his, uh, with his mother and his sister and, um, and a child. And they were planning to go back after spending about 14 days here in Seychelles. They had been in Africa, um, I believe Uganda or Tanzania, one of those countries. And then he made a stop here and then planning to go back, probably via Dubai, fly back to China after 14 days. And then the air... Then COVID happened and the airport was closed and he couldn't go. So he had to stay here. So in the end, he, um, he rented a house for the family and they stayed there. And, um, and because there's um, no COVID on Ladig and there was no real restriction, so he was having the best holiday in his life. I know. He, and, if he and, was in China, he would not be able to move around. No, no. And uh, I, I think he's done great service to the country. <laughs> investing in, in the economy, but a great service uh, to the country as well. You know? So that's an amazing... <laughs> uh, really good story, you know. Perhaps yeah. not so much for him, you know. But I think they are they are having a whale of a time yeah. there. They, yeah, they, there's there's even another story. There's a guy who came here with his girlfriend on the last plane out of Dubai. Uh -huh. They are both from Cyprus, and his wife is um, is attending. They are both attending the first child, and he decided he checked um, that Seychelles has got a very good medical system. 
and he decided to come and get his um, and um, for his wife to have give birth here in Seychelles. So they've wow. been here since March, and they will leave only after the child has reached a certain age here. So they've rented a house here, and they Does just has the child get the passport. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but they they basically now just relaxing and working from Seychelles and um, and waiting and waiting for the birth of their child. Fantastic. So I'm going to conclude this uh, interview now. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, it's been amazing talking to you and listening to your insights. And what I'm concluding here is every crisis creates opportunities. And I believe the opportunity for this paradise lies to give its sensitive island uh, resources a break, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier. But it's time to return to full capacity to protect the same fragile resources, but hopefully the lessons of this crisis makes uh, them the healthiest and strongest to be able to weather the next storm. And I believe mm -hmm. your leadership is well focused on this strategy. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you this it's, afternoon. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure. Thank you.